Hi everyone, it's been very exciting. Um, obviously we had some challenges going into camp with the late notice of injuries, uh, which made us bring in some, some exciting replacement. Um, I'm really excited to see those players in training. Um, we have been able to um, do some tactics uh, as always. Uh, we know Canada is a very, very good aggressive pressing team. And as you know, in the last camp, we said we want to take steps in our attacking game and try some new things and develop, uh, which we worked on. And I think from experience, if we go back two or three years, when I didn't do a great job to explain why we did and what we did in advance, I had to explain it afterwards. I think I'll take this opportunity to explain it in advance this time. So this is one of the very few windows before the Olympic qualifiers and the potential Olympics that we want to go to that we can actually experiment and look at plays and look at things. Because then February is a qualifying window. April is very close to the Olympics. We want to have some continuity working on starting lineup and such. So this window is the one opportunity against the top ranked opposition where we can actually test players. Uh, so this first game is actually going to be more similar to my quote that I used when I played Spain way back when I said it's maybe not about winning a game but winning a player. So we're going to give a lot of players an opportunity in, in this first game to, to look at them and what they got in this environment so that they are given a fair chance to, to fight for a spot on an Olympic roster as well. So this camp is a bit different in that sense, uh, especially this first game. Anna Harrington. Hey Tony, how are you? Um, nice to see you again. Same. Um, just a quick one, it's obviously been, sounds like it's been a busy couple of weeks for you. Um, can you talk us through what these weeks have been in terms of the links to the Sweden job? Did, did you go and interview for the Sweden men's job? And where are things at with you right now? And, and also with the Matildas, because obviously your players hear about this stuff as well. Yeah, and I think, first of all, I need to credit you guys. I think you do a phenomenal job creating headlines around this team. And, and that's part of the business, especially when you have players or coaches which contracts runs out within a 12-month period. Um, you know, there's always going to be speculation what's next. It's going to be speculation about whether there's a dialogue with the Australian FA about extension or whether he is going to move on to this one or this job. And I need to credit all of you for, for all the job that you do. And, and especially with the interest in this team, it's just going to keep the interest of this team is going to keep growing, which means there's always going to be speculation, whether it's about me or a player. Um, what I want to be clear on here, though, that is important to me is that my sole focus is on the Matilda and make them qualify for the Olympics. And we have unfinished business with this team. And I've said that from, from day one. Then I know that there's always going to be people that interpret that quote differently and speculate about this and this. But the one thing that I want to be very, very clear on is that I am extremely passionate working with this team. I love this team. And what we have done really good, and one of the key reasons why we perform so well in the World Cup, is that as a team, staff and players, they are extremely connected. We talk to each other about everything and we look in and not out. So all the potential disturbance that could be outside and speculations, that is for, for the public and the players and me are focusing 100% on us preparing for the Olympics. So in that sense, when you say how it's been for you, it actually hasn't been any different than what it normally is working with this team. That there's always going to be speculation about things and our sole focus is just to get one day better. To come back to my mantra, one day better, one day better, one day better. That's my focus. Yeah, I guess I'd, I will just do a follow-up on it then, Tony. Um, the statement you put out, uh, I think it was about a week ago, um, said you committed to staying through this Paris Olympics campaign. So I take it that's through till at least after, you know, whether you qualify or not, if you qualify at least through till the end of Paris. And how has it been for the players as well? Um, have they just sort of blocked it out? Have you sort of addressed it with them and talked through it? Different coaches. I mean, every coach has these sorts of things where job opportunities come up. Yeah. So have you had those sorts of conversations with the players? Yeah, I actually have a very, very, very close relationship with the players in terms of talking about things that potentially could disturb our performance. Uh, one thing could be speculation about a coach's future. Uh, we're always open about everything. And what I really love with this team is the professionalism. Uh, you know, they just, you know, like they do this. Hey, it's part of the business. Let's move on. Let's get prepared for the Olympics. This is about the next training and the next game. And that's what we focus on. And I think you've seen the players talking about these last couple of days as well, that, you know, their sole focus is what we are doing as a team. And then the speculation outside doesn't really disturb them at all, to be honest. Um, maybe from my perspective, and you know this from, from working with me for years now, the one thing that I maybe is not liking with this, that for me, this is about the players. It's not about Tony. And I'm not 
too happy about the attention being directed towards me as much as it is. Because for me, I want to sit here and talk about the Charlotte rules being in camp and maybe getting a debut in the senior team, like a Sarah Hunter coming in after being very good in U23. Like, that's what I want to talk about. I, I want it to be about the players. So that frust frustrates me a bit, to be honest. But it's part of the job. Tom Smithies. Tom? Yeah, sorry, I was just, just getting uh, my camera, trying to get my camera up and running. There we go. Um, morning, Tony. Hi, Tom. Um, you talk about uh, the new faces. Um, how many new faces can we expect to see in the first game, and will it be a completely different team in the, in the second game? Yes. I reveal almost, over, almost everything here. You're going to see a lot of new faces in this first game. We really need to take this opportunity and be brave enough to do it. Um, we're in a process now where we need to, to test players to see who um, can earn a spot in the Olympic roster, um, but also test different things in what we're doing now in terms of, of developing our, our playing style. And do that against a top-ranked team away is a perfect opportunity for us. And I don't want to miss that window. Um, it doesn't mean I'm not going to try to win the game and we're not going to try to win the game, but we're not going to do that on expense on, on just playing experienced players or continuity in the starting lineup. So you're going to see two completely different lineups in this game. On these games, sorry. Follow up, Tom. Sure, um, and just to, just to clarify something that you said to, um, to, to Anna, I think it was Emily Van Egmond said that as far as the players were concerned, you would be coaching at the Olympics, assuming they qualify. Can, can, you, can you put her mind at rest? that you'll be coaching at the Olympics if you qualify? <laughs> well, the focus is just on qualifying right now. My contract is to the Olympics, so my sole focus is there, yes. Okay, next question to Ha. Thank you, and uh, great to see you again, Tony. It's uh, nice and cloudy here in Vancouver Island, but we're looking forward to a big game tomorrow. Um, you were an assistant coach with the U.S. in 2012 in that big historic game in Manchester. What do you remember about Christine Sinclair's game? It's regarded as one of the best she's ever played. What's your thoughts on her career and that game in particular? Well, um, first of all, I'm, I'm, I know both me and the players are very honored to have the opportunity to be a part of her uh, send-off game um, here in Vancouver. Um, I've had the privilege to, privilege to see her play a lot, uh, coached against her a lot as well. Um, and for me, she represents so much more than just being one of the best forwards to ever play the game. Also, the way she carries herself and the way she leads the team as a person uh, has been tremendous impressive to, to watch. Uh, so it's actually going to be extremely privileged to, to be there to honor her on, on Tuesday. Um, what I remember about that, that game is that all the games when you play against the Canadian team, they really wear the jersey with pride and they give it 100. Um, it's physical games, they're running, they're well organized, it's a team that work for each other. And, and Sink have always been one that really leads uh, from the front uh, and people follow her because uh, she's such a leader, both the way she plays and the way she carries herself. She's a role model for so many players. And another one for me, uh, about that Sweden job there that I know you were asked about it a little bit. What would it mean for you as a, a guy from Sweden, you live in Sweden, to take over for Jan May Anderson? Because it's, it's a big job. It's prestigious on a personal level. What would that mean for you? Well, I think we've been very clear on the statement, both from the FA and myself, that we don't comment on speculation. The sole focus and the 100% focus for me is on the Matilda and make sure that we qualify for the Olympics. Thanks, Hark. Up next is Claire. Hi, Tony. Claire Hanna with TSN. Hi, Claire. Um, just to follow up on one of Har's questions about Christine Sinclair, um, talk about how it's going to be a privilege and honor to play against her in her last matches for Canada. Do you think it will be a distraction for your team? Have you ever played, you know, in a match where somebody's being honored to that level um, and means so much to a country? Yeah, I've, I've actually had some some experience with that. I was very privileged to be part of every warm back send off game, for example. Uh, also, one of the legends of of the game. Um, I've been both coaching a team that have been celebrated, a player that finished, but also against. And um, I actually think it's going to inspire the team. Uh, you know, before the game, these players are so professional and so respectful. And I know the players want to honor her a certain way as well. I know that Canada will do their part, but I know our team want to do their part as well to honor her before the game. 
Uh, but one way of honoring her as well, she is a competitor. She wants a game. She wants it to be a game. And, and all these players are going to respect that in that way as well. And really, once the game starts, it's two teams that really want to go at each other and make, make the most out of every single minute out there. Because that's the best way to honor her as well. And then uh, one more, I know you were asked about that 2012 game in the semifinal at the Olympics and you talked about how the Canadians wore the jersey with pride, but you know, have you ever seen somebody put a performance together like that single-handedly? Uh, it's, it's, it's one of the ones that is up there, one of the most unique performances as an individual have done for sure. Um, I mean, and she, she is and have always been one of those players that can that can turn a game uh, on a dime by herself and by her individual performance. Uh, but I also know the one thing that stands out with her is that she doesn't want it to be about her, she wants it to be about the team. Uh, and that what stands out for her. You know, forward that scores that many goals, that is one of the biggest le legends of the game. When you hear her talk about things, it's all about the team. She probably would say, hey, I wouldn't score those goals if it wasn't for my teammates. You know, that's typical sync. So it wasn't outstanding individual performance, but I know that she would credit the team for her performance because that's just how she is as a character. Thanks, Claire. Next Thank up. you. That's why we have to ask so many questions to other people about her. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Claire. Adam. Thank you. And hi, Tony. My colleagues on this call have done a good job asking about a lot of the storylines going into the game. So I might take it in this direction then. Just Bev has done a very intentional job of avoiding a narrative of revenge for the game from the World Cup group stage. Um, obviously, it was one for the Canadians that led to a lot of disappointment and a lot of self-reflection. But without revisiting the past too, too much, what was it about that performance on home soil that you learned about your group against a, a formidable opponent that you have some pretty extensive history with? Well, um, comment first on Bev's uh, approach to that game not being a revenge. I think she's a true professional. She's done a phenomenal job with the Canadian team. And I think they're also in the process of preparing for the Olympics. So this is not about something that was connected to the World Cup. This is a new cycle, a new journey. So her focus, sole focus, is probably preparing her team to the Olympics. Um, you know, we lost two games against them as well on Australian um, soil when we played Canada uh, earlier prepping for the World Cup. Um, and then we were lucky enough to, to win against them in the World Cup. I think it was one of those days where we really had our backs against the wall and, and we knew we needed to win to get out of that group. And, and the determination in our playing group at that day, I said it even two days before the game, that I knew we would have a good performance. I didn't know we were going to win, but I knew we would have a good performance because I could sense in the group what they're about. So when you ask what did I learn about my group that day or those days, is that uh, when the best game is needed the most, they will show up. Um, and they did that day. And, and it was very close to a perfect game uh, and we were clinical in, in everything we did uh, but i also want to be honest when you rewatch that game i still don't think it was a four nil game there's a couple of opportunities for canada there as well but we were more clinical at, at the night than, than they were um, but i'm sure it's going to be a tough battle now as well these two games coming up thanks adam did you have a follow-up oh. I did, sorry, yeah, I just had muted myself while Tony answered up. Um, just uh, to sort of circle back to the beginning of the conversation about young players that you're excited to see, especially against Victoria. Canada is obviously in its own preparation, as you alluded to, plus the celebration for Christine. So as a coach with these variables coming into a unique first match especially, um, are you coaching within your team um, to find development and, and certain standouts as much as you are trying to win the game and, and how does that change your approach with you and your staff? Um, actually spot on. Um, it's like you listen to our meetings these couple, last couple of days because that's exactly what we've said. We've said we need to be brave enough to test certain players in certain position. We need to test certain tactical aspects of the game, certain phases of the game and learn from the mistake that we will make tomorrow, but also learn to get some good, perfect pictures. Uh, we'll see what that do to the result. We always want to step on the field is trying to win, uh, but we're trying to win by getting better in everything we do. So you'll see some new plays and new positions tomorrow. You see some, some new tactics that we're going to try that we, we tried some of it in the, in the qualifiers in, in uh, 
October. Um, so in that sense, it, it's a unique game when you prepare. We're going to do the same thing on Tuesday, uh, but with a different lineup. So both these games are what we call development games and, and trying to take this team to, to the next step. Um, and to, again, yes, summarize and, and repetition of what I said in, in October, we did a very, very in-depth World Cup review on our performance. And there's some standouts, positive standouts about our pressing game, for example, that uh, our pressing efficiency was top three in, in the world in the World Cup. And our ability to break the last line with control and quality was also top three in the world in the World Cup. But then there's areas where our regame when we lose the ball was not at world standard. And then breaking the first and second line, meaning more control in the build up to get to the point where we can break the line uh, is also those two improvement areas. We did a tremendous job in the qualifiers in October to take steps in the right direction. But now we need to test that against the world class opposition top 10 ranked team and do that against a pressing team like Canada, we're probably going to get dispossessed at times and the, their transition game is, is going to hurt us. But we want to try to take that step and this is a massive opportunity for us to do that. Thanks, Adam. We've got time for two more questions. Uh, Anna. Yeah, Tony, um, obviously during the week we heard Sam's not going to be playing, um, which I know you've been able to do that before without her, but um, sort of twofold. One, do you know the seriousness of that injury, that foot injury Sam's got? And also you've talked about, you know, developing this game, taking it more attacking. Um, how um, in the qualifying, at least, she was still a, a pretty pivotal part of that. Yeah. Who can sort of pull the strings of attacking wise and how do you make this new look attack work? Yeah, um, first one is I, I'll leave that for, for Chelsea to comment because she's back with club. Uh, but we always work very close uh, with clubs in communication. And it's all about play welfare. And, and both Chelsea and us want her available as much as possible. Uh, we have important qualifiers coming up in February. We have Olympics coming up. They have important games coming up. So uh, this is a part of a cooperation with the clubs as well to not push players to break and get long-term injury. Uh, they have communicated that it hopefully not uh, a long, long one. Exactly the days or weeks uh, on that injury, I can't comment on that. I'll leave that to the club. When it comes to looking at players that replace her in that 9 and 10 role that you saw we worked on linking in, in the qualifiers, you saw Amy Sawyer doing a good job. We experiment with her a little bit, both as a 9 and a 10. Uh, we have Evie and Mary since before that can play in that role. We have a Caitlin Ford that can play in that role. We also looked at Alex Shidiak that you know in the past and even Tamika Yallop. Uh, and now with Remy Simpson coming into the camp as well, as you hear, there's a lot of options. And we need to pick and choose the ones that we're really intrigued at seeing in the first game and then the second game. But those plays that I mentioned now is the one that in the mix uh, for watching in those spots. Final question to her. Hi, Tony. I understand you know, since the World Cup, there's been a lot of focus, a lot of attention on the Matildas in Australia. What's been kind of the, the fallout or how much attention, media coverage, your games are being sold out? How has that kind of transpired after the successful run up at the World Cup? What's kind of been the follow up from that in Australia? Well, first of all, I want to thank all you guys here on the call and everyone that have actually helped build the brand and get the attention for the Matildas and, and women's football and football in, in Australia. Uh, without you guys, we wouldn't be where we are. So we're in this together. Uh, and I said that years ago when I said about the Legacy 23 and beyond, we're in this together. At the end of the day, what we can do is to make sure that the product of 90 minute football is as good as possible so that people want to come watch us. We're always going to be aggressive in defending. We're going to be taking a step forward. We're going to be attacking minded. It's going to be exciting to watch us play. If you look at the goal scoring average that we had over the last year as well, that says a lot about what kind of product you get when you come watch the Matildas. Um, and that's what we can do in terms of you know, branding and, and creating a vibe around the team. But the other thing that I think these players do tremendously well, the on-field stuff is one thing, the product of 90-minute football and how we play. But the other thing is how we carry ourselves outside of the field and the role models that they are and how authentic and real they are as human beings. And that's one of the key reasons why I am so passionate and why I love working with this team as much as I do, because I think they are so good role models for so many people out there, not just as footballers, but as people as well. 